Stay tuned to find out why Machu Picchu, Iceland and Santorini might be some of the destinations on your bucket list, but why its twin destination is a far better option if you are like me, an eco-friendly traveller. And find out when asked at check-in whether you're carrying anything for anyone else, the answer should be hell yes. Hi and welcome back. I'm Rebecca and this is Green Pages and I've just finished reading the book Travel, Easy Tips for the Eco-Friendly Traveller by Juliet Kinsman. Without stating the obvious, it's for anyone that really associates themselves as an eco-friendly traveller or aspires to be a little bit more thoughtful before they click to book their next trip. At 150 odd pages, you're going to get through this easily within a weekend. So it gives a really good overview on the subject, but it really does what it says on the tin in terms that it is some easy tips, so some of them may be more obvious to some than others. However, there's some definitely golden nuggets along the way and some really interesting insights that Juliet gives us that makes it worthwhile. It's in the chapter called Holiday Planning. And this is where Juliet very cleverly gives us a very easy little table. For example, if you've always wanted to go to uh, Venice in Italy, she's suggesting to go to Travasio in Italy. If you've always wanted to go somewhere like Chiang Mai in Thailand, very popular destination, an alternative is Nan in Thailand. Or for example, Santorini, you may be considering something different like Hydra in Greece. She gives this really useful table and that twin destination is a better option instead of, and a little bit more off the beaten track, if should we say, but just as much as a good option in terms of having a holiday or trip there. This chapter, Holiday Planning, very much focuses on the benefits of travelling off season. Now, myself and my hubby have been travelling for many, many years off season. We did Venice, Canada, and numerous different places where nobody else was really going there and it was true you can get better prices it's a less crowded and a much more sustainable option one of the things worth mentioning is Juliet does describe it as many people do as over tourism in this book now there's a video on TED talk that you may have seen if you haven't I really recommend it and it's by a guy called Doug and it's called how to save tourism from itself and Doug actually doesn't call it over tourism, he calls it unbalanced tourism. And there is some incredible case studies in there in terms of the solutions, what we can do to help save tourism from itself. What not to pack might be a bit more of an obvious, easy tip from this book. So things like disposable uh, wet wipes, all those awful little plastic products you get in the airport that you can just throw away and create a huge amounts of waste. That's the more obvious what not to pack. But flipping that on its head and asking, well, what should we pack before we go away? And there's an incredible initiative called Pack for Purpose that Juliet talks about in the book. Now, what is Pack for Purpose? Since 2010, travellers have been supplying items, important, much needed items to over 60 countries. So as an eco-friendly traveller, one of the key takeaways from this book is not just considering about what not to pack, but flipping that on its head and thinking about what could we be packing that could make a real difference to someone else. It might shock you to know for every hundred dollars spent by a tourist from a developed country in a developing country, just five dollars ends up in the hands of the local community. And that was from a UN report. Just five dollars out of a hundred dollars. So how can we help with that ripple effect and make sure our money gets to those local people that we go and stay in these beautiful places? Well, G Adventures is an incredible tour operator that you might have heard of. And they created something called the Ripple Score and they measure what tours actually help the most amount of money get to those communities. There's a glossary section at the back, which I really, really liked. And I'm gonna share a couple of them with you now. So one of them was called Handprint. We've heard of Footprint, but it's 
the opposite of footprint. The handprint is the good we do. So thank you for reading this book. If you act on some of what you are reading, this will give you a bigger handprint and a smaller footprint. Another one I wanted to share with you is closed loop. So some of you may or may not have heard of this. Closed loop is described as a system inspired by nature where things are reused again and again. And some hotels, not many, but are adopting this closed loop system and uh, Creative Hotel Louise in Germany is one of those. So definitely worth checking them out. They use fishing nets uh, in the carpets, for example. And a final term I wanted to share with you that uh, is in the glossary is carbon offsetting. Now, this is a term that's usually assumed to always be a good thing. So planting trees to offset your carbon. And Juliet within this part actually talks about the importance of checking your offsetting money is actually heading to the right direction because a recent study by the European Commission found that 85% of offset projects used by the EU under the UN's clean Develop development mechanism failed to reduce emissions. That's 85% of the offset projects failed to actually reduce emissions. So when you are engaging in carbon offsetting or a company's talking about the fact that they're carbon offsetting, it's really worthwhile checking where that money is actually heading to, considering that 85% in this recent study actually wasn't going to make a difference and failing to reduce those emissions. Aside from the glossary, there's an address book at the back. Although I've heard of these places before, it's given me um, a nice reminder to go back and revisit them. So I've spoken with The Long Run before, and The Long Run is an incredible non-profit programme, and it works with some of the world's most passionate and committed lodges, retreats, parks that are very much focused on these four C's culture, community, conservation and commerce. So the long run is a, is a wonderful place which I'm going to revisit, as well as the Pack for Purpose which I mentioned, Pebble Magazine which is sort of a digital lifestyle hub for people that are really dedicated to a greener and more conscious life. So the Pebble Magazine is awesome. And finally, I hadn't heard of before, the Tree Sisters. And through the planting trees, this is a global network of women that's working to accelerate the greening of our planet. So Tree Sisters is definitely something I'm going to also be checking out. So it's inspired me to go and revisit either or find some new amazing organisations out there. And that's all in the address book at the back. <music>